with the topic about prayer. How many are enjoying the topic of prayer? How many are effectively being answered now? Yeah? Don't ever forget because that, it, you, that is because you started praying effectively as well. Yeah? So one of the things we shall cover, which is so vital today, is the topic on, the title of it is... Again, keys to our answered prayer, but it's number three, the third week, because it's a series that I am giving you. I'm trying to extrapolate as much as I could by the power of the Holy Spirit, because God s said to me, sometimes you just say it generally, people don't get it. Now, if you shred it slowly in portions that they could absorb and understand, there will be better nutrients coming into their system rather than shocking their system. And today, it's an interesting topic about answer, the keys to answer prayer. One of the keys that I'm going to discuss with you is found in the book of James chapter 4, verse 3. How many have encountered this? James chapter 4, verse 3. Where in it, it says, let me wear my glasses a little bit. Yet, even when you do pray, meaning to say, God knows you're praying. Look at your neighbor and say, he knows you're praying. <laughs> and he, he hears you praying. But the biggest question is, will he listen and grant your prayer? And I want you to analyze this very carefully because this involves you and I. Nobody's exempted from this. A lot of people are avoiding God. Okay? Because they are avoiding themselves. They're avoiding the truth. They don't want to hear what God has to say. And yet they are so faithful to listening to themselves. Yeah? Versus listening to God. And this is included. when It's so included, incorporated in their prayer. You may check this out. This was written 2,000 years ago. And yet it's still effective today. Yet even when you do pray. It says here, your prayers are not answered. Are, did we all hear that? Now, what on earth is happening? Jesus was the one who asked you and I to pray. I mean, he's not going to ask you and I to pray if he's not capable of answering. Well, of course he will answer. The only thing is he's not granting it. Because you pray just for selfish reason. Look at your neighbor and say, interesting. Very interesting, yeah. Let's dig into this thing. Look at your neighbor right now and say, right motives. <laughs> the reason you pray is much more important than the words you say. Don't ever forget that. Write that down. The reason you pray is much more important than the words you say. Don't ever forget that. The motive is the why behind the what. Look at your neighbor and say, why? Look at your neighbor and tell them that. Why? Behind the what? That's what we're going to talk about today. And having a pure heart that loves God. How many have pure hearts here? Raise your hands. Okay, how many have impure hearts? Say you wouldn't also raise your hands. So how many have pure hearts here? Raise your hands. Okay, pure hearts, let me address you. God loves that. He loves that. Pure. Meaning to say, you're not allowing any contaminants to come in. 
deterrence, such as unforgiveness, bitterness, hmm? arrogance, pride. Ah, amazing how pride goes a long way always. And then number two, I'll say it again. Having a pure heart that loves God and loves people is always acceptable to the Lord. Is always, I didn't say sometimes, it says always acceptable to the Lord. Look at me. Wasn't it Jesus who said, The only commandment that God is leaving to you and to me is very simple. So we will not complicate the gospel. The word of God. Love God with all. Say it with me. With all. all. Not some. Not few. With all. Your heart. Your mind. And your strength. Many can say spirit, soul, and body. You have to make him number one. You and I know we don't do that all the time. You're going to the church already and somebody said something. Hey, there's a big party. (laughs) Thank you, Jesus. They have all your favorite foods. Really? Huh? But you can go to the church later. You go to church every day anyway or every Sunday. You know, all kinds of things like that. You know how Satan would like to interrupt the blessings of the Lord in your life. Wasn't it God who said, forsake not? Because people forsake it. Why would Jesus say, forsake not your assembling together? If it wasn't so. Isn't it true, sister? Because people do it at the drop of the hat. I love it one day when God was saying to me, it hurts me so much when my people are prostituting the gifts. And I, what, what did you just say? God said, prostituting. I said, wow. And he said, I don't have to make explanations about that. You know what that means? I said, yeah, I do. Actually, the whole of IFGC knows exactly what I'm talking about. Okay? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Let me continue. On the other hand, selfishness is unacceptable. Are you all listening? Look at your neighbor and say, selfishness is unacceptable. There's another one. Revenge is unacceptable. That's right, John. There you go. Revenge is unacceptable because the word of God said it clearly. It's not your role. It's my role. God said, vengeance is mine. Uh, Let me say it in this part first. Jesus said, vengeance is mine. Meaning to say, it's him, not you. Not yours. Look at your neighbor and say, not yours. Okay, let me go on this side here. Jesus said, vengeance is mine. Huh? Says the Lord. Not yours. It's unacceptable, God said. You you know, I was so honest with God one day, and I said, you know why I don't trust you with the vengeance? (laughs) And God said, tell me, Bobby. Okay, you're like, (laughs) here you go. Hallelujah. Do I look decent enough? You know, like, and, and, and I said, you're not doing it as good as I can. Jesus looked at me and he said, you mean as bad as you can? Um, Yeah. God is the master of equalization. He's the greatest equalizer there is. The word of God said it on a daily basis. God puts us in a scale. So if you are overweight, he decreases it. You know, I'm Pastor Bobby, I'm still, and I'm not talking about that kind of overage, okay? If, if you're too much, he will decrease it. If you are too light, he will increase it. Hallelujah, because he's a God of promotion, yeah? But he is also the God of demotion. 
look at your neighbor and say, uh-oh. Yeah. It is really true. Trust me. He is. No wonder he said, vengeance is mine. You want to hear something else? And I exposed myself before the Lord concerning this when I was preparing myself to preach this to you. He said, manipulation and control in my eyes are unacceptable. How many are fun into maneuvering things so you can get your way? Your attitude is you're saying, oh, yeah, I'm a true Christian. I love Jesus and everything. But if it doesn't happen my way, you take the highway, okay? And I know you're listening. You know who's the master of manipulation? Jezebel. You want to be a follower of Jezebel? When you die, the dogs will eat your flesh. And throw, and she was a queen. And yet would end up like that. Don't try God. So once more, I'll say it. Manipulation and control. Guys, I know what it is. You know, one of the things I was trained to do when I was doing my master's in MBA, in uh, business administration, uh, and guys, it's embarrassing. I was number one in, in our class, okay? That means I'm a good manipulator. <laughs> I'm good in controlling things. <laughs> and I was called in, into my mentor's room. And when he announced me, he said, I have bad and good news for you. And I said, begin with bad. I said, actually, it's connected to the good. <laughs> and I said, give me the bad one. So, and he said, um, I'm afraid that if your classmates will find out, you're going to lose your best friends. I, I had so many best friends in, in the class. They love me. And I said, why is that? Because I was the only foreigner that got in. This was in England slash Ireland. Two governments joined together. To make a project out of us. What is two and a half years was crunched into seven and a half months. And yet God wasn't happy. He said, he wants to make sure I was number one. But let me say something to you. So part of our training is to control. Look at your neighbor and say, control. How many are good in controlling here? Okay. Control is okay when the control comes from God. But when it is coming from the flesh, cuidado. You be careful. Especially, I would be so afraid if I always get what I want. I mean to say, my way. You know why you're quiet? You know why the wheels are turning? Because it's there. You have to fight it like anything. Tooth and nail. And make sure God prevails. All right? People were asking me, how do you know it's God speaking to you? Oh, because my flesh doesn't like it. <laughs> am I wrong, guys, or am I right? Hmm? I love it when you are all quiet. Sincerely. Because I know it's working, isn't it? And that's the word. Work, doing a mighty work within us. Look at your neighbor and say, you're getting better. <laughs> so stop being bitter, okay? Stop. You want to be better? Stop being bitter, okay? <laughs> Take your pick. Here's another one. Jealousy. How many are fond of getting jealous here? When I don't have what you have? <laughs> I am as equally deserving as you are. Wait for your turn. Who knows? Yours will be bigger. Yeah? I love it when our, our dear pastor would, would say, because somebody was oh, oh, terribly blessed. <laughs> That's a wonderful thing to put together. 
terribly blessed, okay? When somebody's terribly blessed and everybody's hearing and they don't have a lot, Pastora would stand up and say, you're next in line. Say, oh, yeah, okay, that makes sense now. <laughs> but prior to that, hmm, hmm, I don't know why I don't like you so much, okay? And the other one, which is really a big thing before God, and he told me, tell everyone about this because I need to address this issue in your life. Pride is unacceptable. Let me explain something about pride. It's the very nature of Satan. You want to be like your father? A liar? A conniver? A manipulator? Then start operating in pride. I, I was reading it today. He said, oh, but the humble shall inherit the whole earth. Oh, and I said, God, it would have been great. He said, and the humble should inherit the whole of California. That would have been a big deal, sister. The whole earth? Hello. The humble. Look at your neighbor and say, nothing wrong with being humble. <laughs> Everything is wrong with being proud. Pride equals demotion. The proud shall be abased. And the humble shall be exalted. Which one is it you want? It's not a feeling. It's a decision. Okay? That's John's favorite line. Hallelujah. Of all things that I'm teaching, that's the one he had memorized by heart. And then God told me, write it down. I didn't feel like saying it. I said, please, God, please. And he said, write it down. Okay. Praying to God that you will win the lottery. <laughs> I said, Lord, but I buy the lottery. And God said, did I correct you already? Share to them what I said to you. Okay, I'll share it with you guys. One day I, I said, okay, I'm going to buy. Of course I was buying because I'm hoping, yeah. I even told God, come on, let me just win the lottery. <laughs> How many have done that to God? I'm going to bless all the Christians. <laughs> That's not funny. Because God spoke to me and he said, you know what, come back here. And, and I said, yeah. And he said, do you remember that time because you were not insured? And you decided to, where's Annie? Annie, raise, raise your hand. And try, Annie, Annie, will you just stand up for once, please, okay? Annie, isn't it true? I look at you six months before it happened to me in the hospital. My top class insurance, the Lord told me, stop it. Guys, if I did not ask Annie to do it, I, I remember her looking at me like I was losing it. I'm, I'm, I'm serious, guys. She, she looked at me like, are you sure, Pastor? Like, she was really like, you're losing your marbles. You know, and I said, I know I am. So anyway, she said, are you sure? I said, honey, where, where, when was I ever sick? And we've been doing it. And, and my insurance was pretty expensive. It's almost like $1,000 a month. So I, he, said, I, uh, he said to me, cancel it. So I had to tell Annie about that. My boss was telling me. I wanted to manipulate boss by saying, hey, what if something happens to me? And indeed, six months later down the road, I was dying in the hospital in coma for over, for two and a half months, literally. And now probably Annie was saying, mm, didn't I say? <laughs> didn't I say? How many women are always say, I told you so? <laughs> Men, I'm not asking you not to listen to women. I'm asking you to pay attention. There's a big difference, Annie, huh? Because I paid attention to you, but I listened to God. You may be seated. Let's give Annie a big, big hand. You out there, this really happened. Six months down the road, I didn't know that I was going to be in a hospital in coma, dying. Every day being threatened to die. But I want you to know when I woke up, that's when God said, okay, 
We had run up the bills big enough. You know how much it was, sister? $3,780,000. When it was $3 million, they were pressure, pressurizing my sister. They were pressuring her. Uh, start looking for a cheaper place because I was in a first class place. And I was all by myself in a room all the time. Private room. And look at your neighbor and say, our dad has class. Okay? <laughs> look at your neighbor and tell them, top class. So you don't forget, okay? So anyway, I was in a top class place. I was in the biggest room of the ICU rooms that they could perform any emergency mine, major operation on the spot if they would like to. So anyway, $5,000 a day. <laughs> and God telling me to cancel my insurance. And this is what he said to me. Chat. Uh, sorry, uh, lottery versus God's provision. God told me, when you got me, Bobby, you more than won the lottery. Amen. And that's not just me. Look at your neighbor and say, and that goes for you too. Mr. Lottery owner, yeah? Winner. Look at your neighbor and say, you're a winner. Tell them right now, you're a winner, okay? God's chosen winner, okay? So Jesus looked at me and he, and he said, when it was time to pay, I remember my sister asking me, Bobby, please pray. And she knew I just got back from heaven, probably I have extra access, you know what I mean? Like I have extra jing 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 hotline to Jesus. And, and, and I remember getting upset. I called her back and I said, come back here. I, you remember that. And he said, come back here. Because they were pressurizing my sister. Come on. Do it. They were pressuring her to do something about it. And God told me last night, um, Natalie, this is what he said to me. I was the one who prepared that woman. Who prepared that woman in the CMISP the day before she retired. Uh, not retired, she was fired from that position. And I prepared her vengeance on your behalf. My sister was in the line with all those people. Some of them were our customers in the homeless project. We have, what are you doing? And then suddenly the highest position came out and said, you spotted my sister. Come to my office. And everyone said, what? We've been here starting waiting and everything. And Jesus said, shut up everyone. 110 degrees, she said, when it happened. And she went straight in the ring. She said, what do you need? <laughs> she escalated my, oh, hallelujah, Jesus. And Jesus was the one saying this story to me. I escalated your need from state of California into the federal one. And when they paid for my entire bill, seven, three hundred, seven hundred and three million seven hundred and eighty thousand, that's when California was bleeding for cash. And that's when God said, carte blanche for him. And so God told me, don't ever, ever be controlled by that urge you have to win the lottery. Don't pray to me. He said, you already won the lottery yeah. when you got me. Okay. So there, I learned my lesson again. How many are fond of learning your lesson? <laughs> when it's well learned. You know what I mean? So Hallelujah. In fact, anything that's selfishly based is an unacceptable thing motive-wise to God. Somebody once asked a little boy if he said his prayers every night. And the boy replied, he said, oh, took a second and he said, no. He said, some nights I don't need anything. Oh, what a simple faith, isn't it? Then I'm sure this sounds familiar to all of us. The first and foremost reason for prayer is to develop an intimate relationship 
with God. Look at me. Intimate relationship. I thought I'm already born again. I could hear God. I have the Holy Spirit. Absolutely. But the problem is you don't always obey God. You can hear God, but you're not obeying God. I remember that time when God told me, don't go near that woman. I went near the woman. <laughs> she became my wife. Okay. <laughs> Did you hear John saying to me, you should have listened, okay? <laughs> I've been single for 20 years now, as we speak. I learned my lesson. A well-learned lesson. You want to go ahead of God? You think your taste, your preference is much better than his? Suffer the consequences, baby. Because it is surely going to come. So you understand me now when I'm sharing this. I'm, I'm opening my heart to you. My life. I don't hide anything. Because it's beneficial for the body of Christ. You'll learn. Yeah? But you want to make sure you're learning well. Look at your neighbor and say... Get comfortable with being mature. <laughs> yeah? Think about it. How long do you think your marriage would last if you only came home to see your spouse when you need a clean laundry, a good meal, and a little loving? Is that familiar? Little loving? I'm almost done. The same principle, I, I promise you the answer is not very long. It's not going to last long. Because uh, it's not the proper way. It's a relationship. It's not they provide me everything I need. That's why you're my wife. Or that's why you're my husband. Listen. Listen. When Jesus decided to marry us, how many are married to Jesus right now? You're committed. He's waiting. He's coming back for us so we'll have our proper wedding one of these days. But I want you to know when he did, he took it seriously. But you don't only go to Jesus because he can provide. You go to Jesus because you have a wonderful, loving relationship with him. Do you hear me? And you can tell him everything. And I will say to this group here, you can ask him for anything. Because the word of God says, if you ask or according to his will, meaning to say it is written in the scripture that God has provided it, it's yours. All he asks of you is believe and be comfortable believing him. Not like every minute like, hey, Lord, I believe you. Next minute, I panic. I believe you. I panic again after another minute. How many are doing that? Don't raise your hands. Shame on us. That's all I'm saying. Lord, heal so and so. And of course, the very, even before you open your mouth, God said, I already discerned what you're going to ask me. Let alone when you declare it. Because I was the one who said, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Yeah. So it is written. So it is spoken, so it is ratified. Hallelujah. Claro. Hallelujah. Yeah. Amen. Pastor, you speak Spanish? I see. Okay. <laughs> the same principle applies to prayer. Jesus said, if you abide in me, pay attention. What do we do? How do you abide? Look at me. Because this is still ambiguous to other people. Today it will not be. The word of God said, stay with me, meditate on my word day and night. You know what we do instead? We meditate on our worries day and night. 
and we wonder at the end of the day, why is my blood pressure so high? Why is my heart palpitating? Go figure. Go figure. Simple, isn't it? If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, stays with you. That's the meaning of the word abide. Stays in you. You will ask what you desire. And I promise, God said, and I am God. It shall be done for you. And he's saying this once and for all. It is written. John 15, verse 5. New King James Version. When you focus on abiding in Christ, you will get a response to your asking. James wrote, your prayers are not answered because you pray for selfish reasons. The truth is, we're innately self-centered. Whether you're going to accept that or not, it's the truth. We are innately self-centered. Ben, don't you ever forget that. We are innately so. I'm just, I'm just simply saying, Ben. God's word will not lie. You're with me. I am telling myself that, and I have to fight against it. Trust me, I'm fighting against it. How many are fighting against it? Being self-centered. Some of you are honest. Okay. But it's the truth. It is the truth. So be careful about that. And that's why we need to purify our hearts on a regular basis. This is why we need to abide in His Word. Because if it is only the Word we're looking at, focusing on, thinking, speaking and everything, there will be no chances for self-centeredness to take the throne of your decision. <sighs> You know what? I said that better than you guys are responding. I'm serious. Do you want me to repeat that? No, I won't. Okay. <laughs> okay. Because she said please. Okay. She said the magic word. If you are focusing on the word of God day and night. If that's the focal point of your life, there will be no room for self-centeredness. It will never take the throne room and the throne of your decision. Never. Never. Look at your neighbor and say, you heard it. Never. <laughs> the reason why it's happening is because you're giving into it. The mind is a tricky thing if you do not submit it to God. You're submitting it to the world. And highly likely Satan is jumping up and down and saying, I want again. Eh, 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 eh. Yeah? And his butt is not even as good as mine, okay? And I'm proud to say that. See that? Okay, so you Jesus. John, I was just being funny, okay? That's all. Or not, okay? Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> In closing, oh, thank you, Pastor. Thank you. Hallelujah. In closing, guys. Oh, I don't feel like being selfish right now, but let me drink this. But on a serious note, in closing, I'll wrap this up by saying it may be painful at first when you're shredding the selfishness, yeah? And when you're focusing on the Word of God day and night. It's a lot of work. I am telling you right now, it's a lot of work. But it's a beautiful work. Because it's rewarded by God himself. But we must do it if we want to see our prayers answered. 
How many are sick and tired of praying and you're not getting answers? I want to see the hands of those who are sick and tired. You prayed and you did not get the answer. Today, that shall be completely erased. Yeah. Officially, we're announcing it to IFGC. You guys heard me. The end of the era of prayers not being answered. Because from now on, we shall meditate on the word of God day and night. We shall abide in his word. And we can ask for anything. And Jesus said, it shall be done for you. Now, Jesus doesn't lie. We sometimes lie. Trust me. But not God. So let's stand up, guys. Let us pray. How many enjoy the word today? Yeah? But a better question I have is how many would like to practice it? Yeah? Then officially I'm announcing it. All your prayers are answered now. Yeah. And I'm serious. It's being answered now. Because you have aligned yourself to the absolute solution of your requests. And you wouldn't ask him for anything foolish. Remember what I said to you. When God said to me, the moment you got me, you won the first prize. Okay. Look at me. How could, you not, how could you not win the first prize when your very life itself, which doesn't have any value in money, is given you every day? Look at me. Did you have to work very hard and produce the oxygen today? When you woke up this morning, were you struggling? You couldn't breathe? <laughs> Did it happen to you, Sam, like that? And some say, no. Because it's the truth. Absolutely free. Now you believe Jesus is giving it to us absolutely free? First prize. Look at your name and say, hey, you're a first prizer, okay? You're our first prizer. La, -a. okay, we say in our like, la, -a. lotto, okay, la, -a. you're a la -a winner, okay. So thank you, Jesus. I wish the Irish people could hear me say, yeah. Okay, let's raise our hands before the Lord, Father, in surrender. As you uh, cement this very message in our hearts. We are trustworthy people. We're not one ear in, the other ear out. This is useless, God. Such a waste if we do it that way. But if we want the word to be actively and proactively moving on our behalf all the time in a miraculous way, then we better do the simple steps. Focusing on you, day and night. Not on problems, not on differences, not on things that we can complain about. Just like the Israelites, you already saved them, took them out of Egypt, and, da -da 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 -da, and provided the protection in the morning, provided the protection in the evening by giving them the fire that they didn't have to work for 40 years, for goodness sake. And yet they never stop complaining. Shame on people sometimes, Lord. Yes, I do say it. Shame on me if I do that. Now, today, however, God, there's a different ball game happening. Because we have resolved in our hearts we will be super satisfactory to Jesus. That's our decision. And this is the prayer of our hearts. In Jesus' mighty name. Everyone said, Amen. Amen. Love you guys, okay? Slow. Don't sit down yet. Uh, Philippians chapter 2, verses 3 to 4. God was just telling me, I hit, hit the jackpot when I received Jesus as my Lord and Savior. Amen. Amen? And you too. Tell your neighbor, you too. You hit the jackpot. Okay? So no more buying of the lotto tickets. I know everyone's like, oh, 
Oh, they won in another state. You've won already. Amen. <laughs> so the real success, I mean, the secret to success, God was telling me, share it with them. I'll be quick, okay? Philippians chapter 2, verses 3 to 4. It says, don't be selfish. Tell your neighbor that. Don't be selfish. Not shellfish. Sel okay, you know how to pronounce it. Don't try to impress others. Are you still impressing other people? Sometimes. Okay. I have one honest. No, really. Are we still impressing people? Okay, there's a husband there asking the wife, are you still impressing people? He said, think, uh, be humble, thinking of others as better than yourselves. Because most of the time we want to think we're better than others. Okay? Don't look out only for your own interests. He showed me this scripture long time ago. He said, I'll show you the real meaning of that. I'll, I'll finish that. He said, but take an interest in others too. He said, do you really want to know how to be blessed? Do you really want to receive and see the success in your life? Because we, we hear this. You know, some people, they pay thousands of dollars to attend a conference, seminars, and how to become successful when the real secret is in the word. Don't just think about your own interest. Think about others as well. This church is known for thinking about the needs of others. Are we not? Yeah? We may be a small church here, but you know whom? You know this week whom you just fed? People that are dying. Not dying. Dying is what we eat. Dying. Dying. In eastern part of Uganda. I have some pictures to show you. When these kids, there's their skin and bones with this big belly full of worms. They don't have food. I, they sh sent me a video of this baby crying for milk. And mama has no more milk to give. Because she hasn't eaten for months. Okay? Crops are not growing. Animals are dying. There is so much famine going on there. But this little church, reach out. We're the first church, by the way. Oh, I'm so proud to say this. We're the first church who sent money. And you know who you are who had helped. We, I sent it right. I couldn't stand it when I see babies crying out for food. We sent money for medicine and for food. And they just sent me a, a video or text saying, thank you so much. Because we fed, I did not feed the whole Uganda, but this church fed a portion of those families that are dying. Okay? You know how sometimes we order food and we don't finish it and just, just leave it there? I can't do that anymore. Okay? That's why I always say, please put it in a box. I want to take you to the homeless. Ever since we fed the homeless, I don't want to waste not a single grain of rice. Because every week, there's someone from the other end. And you know this, because we feed them pancit, spaghetti. Yeah, Ben is going. Yes, we feed them every week. Right? 105 degrees, it doesn't matter. We go there. And they're so happy to receive even our leftovers. In fact, they're excited. Oh, so you went to which restaurant this time? Because they could taste the... Sometimes when I'm about to eat my filet mignon, I'll just get maybe one or two slices, and I leave that, the rest, to the homeless. So excited to receive it. But you give that to other people, they go, hmm. But see, there's a big difference here. Whether it's a leftover or not, you are blessing others. 
We're not throwing away blessings. We're giving it to people. And we're reaching up to Africa in heaven, and if you like, okay? So you guys, be proud of yourself in this matter. If we're going to boast, we're going to boast on what God has done. Look what the Lord has done. He not just healed your body. He healed your mind. He healed your mind. You know what do I mean by he healed your mind? Now you have a different set of way of thinking. You're no longer selfish. Yes, you're not self-centered. You're Christ-centered. Thank you, Jesus. And you're no longer thinking about only your problems. Because thinking about your problems will make you depressed. But when you think about helping others, that's what makes us happy. I'll tell you the difference. Please, when I say this, this is not out of arrogance. Okay? There's a big difference with being a Kardashian and a Christian. You see the difference already? Okay. Just the spelling. Okay? We'll begin with that. God said, if you are rich right now and you don't know Jesus, you can have all the Louis Vuittons in this world and still feel empty. But when you are blessed and God gives you Louis Vuitton, ooh, Jesus. Hmm? You know the difference? Okay. And by the way, he promised us that he will give us the best of the land. So if we look like this, it's because God blessed us. If you look like that, because God blessed you, okay? Now if you have, you used to have fake jewelry. Now if you have a 22 carat jewelry, because you're blessed. Is there something wrong with that, Christians? Now, if you don't have it, that's why I make it a point. I buy something for other Christians. I'm beginning with women because it's hard to buy for men. I said, Lord, if you made me taste Louis Vuitton, so I start giving it. Okay? And one of our members said, Pastor, is that why I'm seeing women wearing Louis Vuitton necklaces? <laughs> Today, God told me, give this to a very special woman named Joanna. <laughs> Does this look like a fake one? Okay, wait till you see what's inside, okay? But this is just a sample. You are God's favorites, all of you. Tell your neighbor, you are a favorite of God. And you deserve the best. And you know why I'm not guilty when I buy it? Because I share it. I just don't buy bags and just make you drool. Like. No. I share that. God, if God tells me to put this in a plastic bag, what's inside, and give it to someone, I'll do it. I don't care. You know that. Guys, even if you have, somebody gave me a Louboutin um, Christian, Louboutin, you know the thing red at the bottom? Okay, La Boutin. Okay, I forgot. I'm going to Paris. I better know my French. <laughs> somebody gave me two pairs, and it was six and a half, and I'm seven and a half. Lord Jesus, I want to fit into that. And <laughs> you know my... This thing is already going like this. God said it's because it's not for you. Ah, okay, got it. It's not my size. He said, give it away. Just like that, okay? Sometimes I would just buy things, and then they're expensive. And God said, that's not for you. <laughs> Keep it in the closet because I'll tell you exactly who you're going to give it to. Is that okay? There's nothing wrong with giving. Freely you receive it because it is from God. Freely give it. This church, God is taking us to that level and we're getting high. If you don't notice it, I'm sorry, but I've been noticing it. It's taking us from glory to glory to glory. And it's going to continue to bless all of us until the last soul in this church will know how to give and not just receive. You'll know when you are a giver because you no longer just get excited when you're just receiving it. You are happy because you can give. 
I'm not just talking about money things here. I'm talking about the salvation, the word, the truth God has given each one of us. Let's proclaim the gospel. If we're going to spend our money, let's spend it for the souls. Guys, we're going to spend thousands of dollars going to our mission to different countries. Some people say, I'm oh, going to a fashionable church. You have no idea. When we minister there, people fall under the power of God. And it doesn't matter which country God called you for as long as you heard from God. It's not based on the spelling. Okay? It's not based how rich the country is. It's based on your obedience because God said, so-and-so is about to commit suicide. I'm, I'm sending you there to proclaim the gospel in Jesus' name. How many are ready to go to a mission? Not just all the missionaries that will be going. I want to see everybody's hands go like this. How many are, have fear of flying? I rebuke that right now in Jesus' name. Okay, you're going to fly. Some of you, you just, the farthest you have gone is Wesak. <laughs> Am I right? <laughs> one, time, one time we were asked in Africa, where are you from? It was like, oh, we're from Sacramento. And Annie's like, I'm from Wesak. <laughs> I said, what's the difference, Annie? <laughs> right? They don't know what Wesak is. They don't know where Sacramento is, but they know it's somewhere in California. We're no in, in Africa as California, okay? But God would send us there, Mexico, okay? Some people, they can even pronounce it, but they already went to Mexico. That's how they pronounce Met Mexico, Mexico. But they've already been used by God to go there. So it doesn't matter which country God is going to send you. Let's go. Let's do it. Let the, it's so boring, I'll tell you now, okay? It is so boring if it's just your family you're only thinking about all the time. Me and my children and my dog. What about the souls that are dying? Hmm? What are the, about the souls that are going to hell? I thank God for our Sunday school teachers that are painstakingly teaching our children. Because they are, you see all these children just coming in? They are the next generation that's going to be going out to a mission field. Okay? And they're not going to be afraid. Teach them while they're young. We used to drag our daughter to, whether she likes it or not, we drag her to our missions. And one time she was surrounded by, she's the only different color in this church. In, I mean, in that church where we, we were serving. And she's like, Mom, how come I have a different color than the rest? I said, that's how God made it. We're called to do it. She's like, okay, and how come I don't have oil in my hair? You know how they grease it. I said, that's what makes you unique. Okay, Noel, you're unique. <laughs> We're changing the meaning of that. It's not ugly. That means a peculiar person. Amen? That should show forth the praises of him. Hallelujah. What is it? Mm. Amen. Yes. Yeah, we have babies that are going with Ezra and Scarlett have joined the where is Shelby and Alyssa? Uh, okay. Shelbito, you're here. Okay. You brought your babies I remember that. We all have to carry the thing over the train thing, and it's leaving, and Esther just, Wah! you know. But they traveled, and this time, London is included in this trip. Yeah. And we're praying also for Janine and uh, Noel to be able to bring even mercy. And guys, if you don't dedicate your children to God, you will dedicate them to Satan. I promise you. Okay? So at the very, I'll say that again. If you do not dedicate your children to God, you will dedicate your children to Satan. Take a pick. Which Do you need to be really intelligent to figure that out? No. Okay? I want to pray for the sanity of all the Christians. Because lately I've been noticing this. Satan had been attacking 
Christians, not just unbelievers, okay? Because I counsel unbelievers and believers, okay? And I do not charge. I'm proud to say that. Christina, how much does it cost to have a life coach now? 200? Is that per day? Okay, and that's a friend, 200. I know it costs more than that. Guys, you get it for free here, okay? Freely you have received it, freely give it. Let's pray in one accord. I'm going to seal this room right now in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit that we all have the mind of Christ. Step out if you don't want the mind of Christ. You, wanna, you want your flesh to win? That's a selfish interest that God is talking about. He said, get rid of your mental, wrong mental state. All of us, all of us, that includes me. Okay, I have to submit every day my mind to Christ. Otherwise, I will glorify Satan who is a defeated foe. Did you hear me, church? Do not submit yourself. It's a submit yourself to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. So don't submit your mind to Satan. Submit it to God who is able to deliver you, who is able to do all things that is beyond your imagination. I'm praying right now, if Jesus is going to come back, we are ready to face our maker. Amen. Hallelujah. And we are ready to be used for his glory. I pray that everybody here right now, God, at the sound of my voice, by the authority you have given us, we want to submit our will to you. Right now, submit it. Submit it. Nobody's going to go home here carrying Satan with you in your house. You invite Satan, you invite death. You invite Satan, you invite sickness. You invite Satan, you invite poverty. You invite Satan, you invite deception. And we eradicate that. That's not going to happen in your household because you are a child. You are a child of a living God who is more powerful than any curses that the enemy or arrows that the enemy can throw at you. Lord, we pull down all the strongholds right now. Help me pull down the strongholds right now. In your mind, in your household, in your job, in your giving, in your sharing. Pull down all the strongholds now. And let's release the power of God. Power of God right now. Oh, may you be saturated by the blood of Jesus Christ. I'm saying this for someone right now. I just feel somebody needs to hear this. I just feel somebody needs to be delivered. I just feel somebody needs a victory. Am I talking to anyone here? Hello? You need a victory in your life. You need success in your life. You need to champion everything, every situation that you're going through. And God is saying, I have anointed, appointed you, commissioned you to do great and mighty things for my glory. Oh, Jesus, I'm so excited. Get excited because God is moving in our midst. We're seeing prayers being answered. We're seeing people being healed. We're seeing people being delivered. We're seeing people having breakthroughs. And God is saying, I will not stop until you see my glory in your midst. Until you see the manifestation of my power in your household. Until you see all your relatives coming to the glory of God. Until you see people being set free. As I speak right now, Father, I thank you for releasing your power. For releasing your healing. For releasing your prosperity. For releasing, Lord God, the passion to serve you. Oh, we cry when we watch the passion of the Christ. Because that's the cry of your heart. That you will serve God. That nothing will come between you and God. And God is saying, today 
I am not just visiting you. We will have a real habitation. Habitation that you've never experienced before. Because I promised that in the last days, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And you will start prophesying. You'll start having dreams. You'll start having visions. You'll start seeing miracle signs, wonders overtaking you in the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you for lifting us up today. Ooh, thank you, Jesus. I just feel like ooh, we're having a takeoff here. No more. No more the limitations of the enemy. It's not going to take place. It's not going to win. You are an overcomer in Christ Jesus. Amen. I just feel the, do you feel the anointing? Amen. Let's give God the praise. Okay. Give God the praise. Come on. Give him the best. Let's go. What the? Praise Him. Praise Him. Glorify His name. Lift up your voice. Shout unto God with the voice of triumph. Come on, give Him your best praise. God inhabits the praises of His people. And God, Sandra, His presence is going to envelop all of us right now. And pray for the breakthroughs this week. I'm praying also for the Sumers for you to receive your victories. Don't expect wrong things to happen. Expect the greater things that God has prepared for you. Do not worry. God said, pray. Do not worry. I say it again. Pray. Because prayer changes everything. Amen? Oh, can I have some people just run around and just go, woo! Woo! I want to go wild for Jesus. Go wild for Jesus. Okay? Hey, we can go wild for Jesus. I can go wild for Jesus. Go wild for Jesus. Because the, the kingdom of God suffereth violence. And the violent shall take it by force in the name of Jesus. Thank you right now. Receive. Receive your breakthroughs. Receive what God had already promised you. Okay? Receive what God already promised you. Tell Satan right now, you are a defeated foe, you liar. Stop lying to me. I'm no longer bound. I'm no longer a slave for Satan. I am a servant of God. Amen? A humble servant of God. Can we raise our hands, all of us, right now? Okay, all over the place. Oh, I pray our children will just learn how to glorify God. That in terms, oh, and then in times of feeling down, God said, there's no time of feeling down. When you feel down, call someone and just say, can I pray for you? Can I encourage you? Because it's not me that's feeling down. It's you, and God wants to me to pray for you. God wants to use me for your glory. Oh, I know you're receiving it. Somebody's receiving this in Jesus' name. Release it. Release it to the overflowing God. Let it overflow this week. I pray for the overflow of your spirit in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. We glorify your name. Tell your neighbor, the Lord bless you and keep you. Oh, face someone. Face someone. I'm going to wait. Find a partner. Okay. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord makes his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Okay, some of you are saying, what's going on here? This is like a crazy church. We are crazy. If you can go crazy for drugs, sex, and other things, we want to go crazy for Jesus. Is that okay? All right. God bless you all and enjoy your week. Amen.